now. There's a lot of various communities that want these. Um, and for Fox to be one of the first is a really big deal, um, both in terms of getting that protocol liquidity that will super help the DAO and the treasury and also just getting exposure to other communities who are interested in these things. So thank you, Text, and yeah, couldn't be more excited to uh, support you on this. Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, super stoked on all of this DAO synergy we've got going on. So thank you, Tex. Super excited for you and can't wait to see some announcements about some bonds launching. Definitely. All right, Shifty, you want to hit that next slide, please? All right, looks like uh, the next up is Josh F. And looks like we got a, a nice um, heavy yes to fund the entire um, engineering work stream going forward. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. And thank you all the Fox token holders for your confidence in us speaking for the whole team. We're all super excited and uh, obviously just feel uh, a little more secure come all of our paychecks end on October 31st. So definitely keeps the engineering effort running. And then next steps I talked, I can't remember when it was a few weeks, somewhere in this process, we will do a uh, engineering kickoff that includes uh, an inner, just people, everyone on the current work stream to be able to introduce themselves a little bit and then hopefully encourage other community people who have been participating in the engineering effort and try to garner a little more. We have a, a space on Gitcoin where we're posting bounties. So there's lots of ways to get involved. Uh, joining the public chats down in engineering is a, is a good way to start. Uh, we have weekly kickoffs at 1130 every Monday with the product team. That's Mountain Time. First and third Wednesdays of every month at 10 a.m. Mountain Time are the engineering demos. And when there's not engineering demos, there's engineering office hours on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. So please come and get involved. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. Yeah, and thanks for dropping all of that information about how to get connected with the engineering team. Um, I'm super excited to see the synergies that we've got as community members are slowly getting integrated with our centralized team and it's super nice to know that we can keep some of our extremely good devs on into the next round of this style um let's hop up onto that next slide um and this is to uh integrate yats into the shapeshift wallet do we have volley in the crowd at all um if volley's not around i know that there's a couple of other people that have been working on this that might be able to speak on his behalf um about what's going on. Um, Don't see Volley, but I can speak to this. Also, we did a great call with Volley and with the, the Yat and uh, Tari team a week or two ago. So if you're interested, check out the proposal, check out the mockups, check out the call for all the info. Um, but yeah, TLDR about this is it's a Yat is a um, standard or it's a protocol. Um, that it's kind of the first app that will be that's being deployed with the Tari chain. Tari is a privacy by default chain that uses the same consensus as Monero, which is pretty cool. And it's um, got a lot, shares a lot of the founding team members and core team members from Monero. Um, and Tari is also focused on being like the digital asset native blockchain. Um, so less less about DeFi and stuff, more about NFTs. And YATs are they're basically their uh, address or their usernames. So instead of like the long hex strings that we're all familiar with, like an Ethereum address that starts with zero X and then a bunch of alphanumeric characters, these are emoji usernames. And you can, if you, you can buy these YATs uh, with both fiat and crypto. So their proposal is to basically integrate the flow for users to be able to both purchase YATs uh, within the Shapeshift mobile app, as well as be able to send and request funds from another user by uh, YAT username. This, uh, they put together mockups for us. They would also be uh, sponsoring a bounty with $60,000 worth of Fox tokens to incentivize uh, the development of this feature. Yeah, so I, I think, think that's, that's enough. Of the, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I think that's one of the coolest things here is the fact that the YAT team is putting up 60K Fox for this, and that's not even coming from our treasury to get this done. It's super exciting. Yes, super exciting. I love seeing proposals like that. 
And my other favorite thing I like to see in proposals like this is an affiliate revenue deal. So also this includes if we were to do this integration, every yacht that's purchased in the Shapeshift app would result in uh, a revenue share for the DAO in a way that does not cost the end user any extra. So I'm personally really excited for this proposal. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough. But if anyone has any questions, post them in stage chat and we'd be happy to follow up. Sure to grab your yachts with the fox emoji on them before they all get taken by Willie and Hunt too. Um, um, looks like we're going to keep moving. Marley, you're on the stage. I know we, we've got a big one coming up for you later. I don't know if you had something to comment about yachts at all, but we can get to you if you're just hanging out for that too. I'm just hanging out. I saw active proposals, so I'd be soon. Okay. Yep, you're you're uh, you're there. So yep, yeah, we are we are in active proposals now. Um, so I will remind the community again: these are ones that haven't gone and passed yet. So this is the perfect time to ask questions about anything you might have any sort of. Um, the blurriness around and get straight from the source from anyone who's um, proposed something here. So first up, or next up, we've got Lorax Dude. So I see in the audience, let me invite you up. Hey, hey, how's it going, Lorax Dude? Hey, it's going great. Thanks for sending me up here. Um... I, I briefly before um, we go a little further with this, I just had a great conversation with Willie. If Willie wants to jump on the stage too to help me out with this, um, so I guess last minute um, we had another uh, great uh, option for how to pull off the merch store, and so we're now thinking about um, allowing the community to consider my proposal to the uh, an alternative proposal that will be coming up uh, with a really great team. Uh, Willie, do you want to share a bit more about that? Yes. Thanks, Lorax. Thanks for the that overview. And first of all, thank you, Lorax, for, for being open to this in the first place and for all the effort that's gone into the really awesome merch store proposal that right now is on track to pass. Um, so yeah, basically, th this is kind of just an interesting uh, you know, predicament for DAOs in general. So uh, one of our community members, uh, a really awesome community member, Akon, um, who has been um, supportive in a number of ways and is really looking to like help support uh, Shapeshift DAO and is also involved with a lot of other cool projects, connected us to this merch store that I'll po post a link to in the stage chat right now. It's called um, Top Drawer Merch. And they're very interesting. They seem like, basically I had one call with them yesterday afternoon. They definitely seem like a viable alternative for a merch store. They're, they focus on other crypto projects. They would actually like do everything for us. So they would set up the website. They would uh, do the designs for the merchandise. They would pay upfront costs to manufacture this merchandise, and then do all the drop shipping stuff. Um, and they, they're crypto natives. They can do things like NFT uh, affiliated swag or swag that only you know people who hold this many PO apps or the top 1,000 Fox token holders would have access to buying. Anyways, it seems like a viable alternative. But uh, we didn't hear about them until this proposal was already in progress. So um, I'm like trying to figure out what do we do in this situation. Fortunately, Lorax Dude was super cool. So I reached out to Lorax Dude. I told him about the situation. And I, my ask to him was, hey, would you be open to uh, you know hearing a draft proposal, hearing a proposal from these top drawer merch folks to uh, see what you know the exact details of what they'd offer? I think it'd be great if we could give the community the opportunity to at least consider this other option before we move forward with this other merch store. Um, so the Rex dude kindly agreed. He said, sure, let's, let's uh, you know, we're going to basically keep his proposal going. Right now it's on track to pass. Definitely still vote on that proposal um, as if it's the only proposal. But stay tuned. Within the next week, we're going to try and get this top drawer merch to put together a draft proposal, come do an AMA with the community so we can really understand and make an informed decision. If we, and then if we like it, Basically, what I'd like to do is have another follow-on proposal before we, before Lorax Dude starts working on the merch store. Another proposal that basically says, "Hey, do we do we want to go with Top Door Merch?" And it's got their proposal. It would be let's just stick with Lorax Dude's proposal and move forward with that. So it should only slow things down like a week, less than two weeks at most. Um, and if everything goes well, we'll move forward with, or if, if yeah, if we don't like TDW, we'll move forward with Lorax Dude's proposal if it passes. Um, or if we do like TDW or TDM. What I would like to do is I would like to make sure that Lorex dude still gets compensated for his efforts so far because he's put a lot of work and time into this great proposal and a lot of thought into it. Certainly that was valuable and uh, and because he's being so cool and giving us you know the the chance to also consider this 
other alternative, I definitely would want to make sure that he's not left with nothing at the end of this. So that could be included in the next proposal too. So yeah, Lorax, thanks you for being open to it. This is this is kind of a cool learning experience for for all DAOs. I think I'm really glad that yeah we were able to handle it, and you're you're just open minded and flexible. And yeah, I'm excited that we'll, we'll be able to give the community the opportunity to consider this this other alternative option, which I do, do think is a potentially viable option. Yeah, these these seem like a really solid team, so I was I was open to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you, Willie. Um, any other questions on the proposal, um, the current proposal? Leave a second for the chat to see if someone types in anything. But it it looks like uh, just a just a thank you from John because yeah um, yeah especially thank you for being so patient and understanding at this last minute to be open to new ideas. Yeah, I I think Absolutely. that's awesome too. I'll just chime in and say that's cool, and um, I I. Second, trying to compensate Lorex dude because he hasn't like I think he had a there's yeah that's enough. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you guys are too kind. <laughs> yeah, um, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Lorex dude. Um, let's hop on to that next slide, please. Oh. And Marley, now it's your time. Cool. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you got the next screenshot because I checked around lunch and I was at under quorum and I just broke 8 million. Um, so I think that's hard quorum. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really excited. I've been working on this stuff nonstop for a while. And uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I think we probably, it deserves its own um, question session, but I, I was surprised when I was like setting up for this meeting, I checked again. I was like, oh, there's another 7 million votes. <laughs> So yeah, uh, super stoked. Um, I guess I would say, do you have any plans for maybe doing like a taxi stake AMA? Um, and then beyond that, do you guys have any sort of next steps for our, how can people find you? Or is there going to be like a tokenomics stream that they can find you or a validating channel for people to follow along? Um, how can people keep connected with what's going on? That's a great question. Um, I like kind of flying under the radar, but I definitely owe it to the community to do a, a a question and answer session. Um, I think that there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Like Cosmos is, um, I call it like a blue chip stock. You know, it's like a well-established crypto and it's um, seen decent returns. Um, it has a lot of uh, liquidity. I think it'd be cool to start, get this one working and then start planning for future ones. So um, yeah, but I think we should probably schedule some kind of uh, Q and A session next week. Cool. Well, um, when you get that figured out and scheduled, please uh, let us know and we'll post it all over the place and make sure we can get a good showing for it. Um, and I just want to personally say congratulations. I know how much work you've been putting into this um, and how you've had to put work into this proposal over the last, I don't know, two months or so. So uh, it's really exciting to see you hit quorum as fast and see the support Let's that you're getting. Cheers and just straight money. And so I'm really excited. I've been working really hard to get everything set up correctly and working with lawyers and I said it on an earlier call. One of the things I learned most from like John and Eric is like, pay your lawyers; they're worth their weight in gold. So, um, it's been slow and diligent, but intentional. So, I'm excited to see that pass today. <laughs> Thanks so much, Marley. Um, yeah, excited okay. for you. Um, and then, oh, I guess one other thing I'll say too is Marley's got a Sabler stream connected to his payments as well, which is the first we've seen on a proposal. Um, yeah, and that's, that's really cool. Great, yeah, that's something I couldn't quite. I didn't want to test it with a 100k sailor stream um, to do it into the like transactions of the proposal, but um, I talked to the community and it makes sense to just trust it and it'll it'll be built soon. I think it's built into the Gnosis Safe module, um, so it's uh, definitely possible. And I, I think it's a really cool. I think they're one of the neatest things I've seen in crypto in a while. The sailor streams. Yeah, I'd love to see more of a marriage between Sablier and Colony for our treasury disbursements because I think that that getting paid every block is a really, really neat idea. Um, cool. Well, let's keep moving. Congratulations, Marley. Um, and uh, Meg, I know you mentioned that you already hit hard quorum and did so quickly, just like Marley. If you want to come back up here and say any more words about your second proposal also passing, we'd love to have you up here. If not, we can keep moving. 
All right, cool. We'll keep going, man. Congratulations as well on that one. Excited for all of your team continuing to move on there and the new positions that might be opening up for that. Um, all right, and ciao. Um, you're up next. I hope I gave you enough time for your mouth to heal after the dentist, but now you have to present in front of everyone. How's it going, Chow? I accidentally left <laughs> instead of joining. <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. Um, I saw I missed what you said, except for my mouth is healed. Um, the so I posted the um, proposed roadmap on Snapshot this morning, so it is ready for everyone to go vote. Oh, there's already a ton of votes there. Okay. Um, that's more than when I last looked. Um, so, um, but anyway, so yeah, it's up on Snapshot and it's up on Boardroom. Is, is the next one up, Tyler, is the next slide, um, on Juno? Do you know? Okay, it is on I believe Juno. so, yeah. Okay, yeah. on Juno, I don't know what happened, um, but it's in Snapshot, but not Boardroom. I reached out to the Boardroom folks and they are going to... They're looking into how come that one's not on Boardroom. Um, but the product proposed product roadmap is up on uh, both Boardroom and um, Snapshot. Awesome. Yeah, excited to see those and cool to see some proposals that don't actually have Fox budgets next to them, but allow people to use their Fox to vote on strategy going forward. Yep. And we had our product office hours earlier today, which... I think went really well, and we'll have them again in two weeks from today at 11 on Mountain Time. Awesome. If anyone's got any questions about the roadmap specifically, I know there's a really great recording of that you can find in the recorded meetings channel to get caught up on every individual item that's on that list. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's keep moving on. What do we have next? We've got uh, the launch stable fox, one fox. I know there was a uh, don't in the audience that was looking to speak about this one. If you want to raise your hand, I'll bring you up, don't. All right, invite sent. I think you might have to click and accept on it. Hey, don't, how's it going? Good, how are you, how are you guys doing? Can you hear me all right? Yep, doing well. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so um, from the Ichi community, so uh, as mentioned, we just posted uh, the new and improved version for the Stable Fox token, One Fox. Um, just quick shout out to a bunch of the community members, um, Mr. Nerd here, especially who helped us, you know, make it better than ever. Uh, we got a ton of feedback on, on how to specify things like a signing policy that supports more um, decentralized governance. Um, and also, you know, did some walkthroughs of our code in more detail as well. So the big thing that's new in the proposal is you'll see a link at the bottom that actually calls out a document centered around the signing policies, specifically around uh, the one Fox token governance, including both permitted and not permitted transaction types. Um, and it's got those multi-sig holders specified in it as well from both the Fox and Ichi communities. Um, so we're we're really excited. We actually think that's a, a great feature improvement. You know, we might start to use going forward. So happy to answer any other questions that uh, might be out there on the uh, proposal. Um, I think it starts this Saturday and then should run through the next week. So uh, hopefully we can get your all support. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, uh, Mr. Nerd. Here, I just shared something, but I think you should probably talk about it more than me. Yeah, this is this is also the Security Workstreams inaugural risk report for a proposal. Uh, the going forward, uh, you can request any proposal uh, to that has made it to ideation or later uh, to be reviewed by the Security Workstream and have a you know proper uh, risk report prepared. Uh, I'm I'm excited about being able to offer that service, and uh, uh, I hope people are interested. Anyway. Awesome. Thanks, Mr. Nerd Heron. Thanks, Don't, for coming up and talking more. Um, really excited that you have stuck through the iterations of this to get this to the point that it is. I really, um, it proves that the DAO process is working. So thank you for that. Couldn't agree more. 
Thanks, everyone. Mm -hmm. All right, this next slide is just a sad gif about the fact that there are problems going on with ideation and proposals in Boardroom. If you are not familiar with how we are handling these breaks in Boardroom right now, there is a link that's on that slide. All of these slides will be collected and posted inside the recorded meetings channel after this, so you can go ahead and navigate through that and click there to find Willie's great tutorial on how we're using the forum post to be a stand-in for our ideation um, as well as um, please reach out to myself, to um, John, to Chow, if you have problems with um, posting things to Boardroom. We have workarounds with Snapshot as well that are getting things up. All right, next slide, please. All right, we're now back down to some forum posts. We've got some updates from DeFi Dave about the uh, GUni for Uniswap v3 that actually made it all the way to proposal, but he's kindly going to pull it down so we can get some more community engagement and involvement. Um, if you see yourself, DeFi Dave, or DeFi Dave, if you're out there or anyone else, if you see your name on there, please go ahead and raise your hand and we'll get you up on the stage. All right. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Looks like we can't hear you right now. You might have a, a microphone tap to talk or something you need to do. Still can't hear you, Dave. Um, I know some people when they've had troubles with their mics, they've had to completely leave the stage and come back in. Um, not sure if that's if you're at that point. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Luna Hawk, how's it going? It's going great. I figured it out. Um, so mine is pretty straightforward. It's kind of similar to the previous one that I created with a different theme. And the story that I want to tell this time is the story of crypto through the crypto animals that we've seen over the years. And so this would be the creatures of cryptozoology. And basically, I will create 10 of these NFTs that will go to uh, the Shapeshift DAO treasury. And then from there, they will have the option to resell, auction, hold on to them, whatever they see fit um, for them. And yeah, and I answered some questions in the forum. Uh, I know Megan had some questions that I answered, so hopefully that is cleared up. And yeah. Well, I know there was one question thrown around a couple of times. Um, would you be willing to um, work with the merch store to make some posters of the NFTs that you create here? Absolutely, yeah. Whoever, um, I was gonna reach out to Lorax dude to discuss that and just see how we might make that happen. But if that's what the community is wanting, we could definitely make that happen. Cool, that's exciting. Yeah, I know there's a lot of community that love your artwork and I know there's some people that are jealous of NFT owners of some of the early stuff that you created. Oh, uh, thank you guys. Yeah, they definitely love to get their hands on some new stuff that you're creating. And I'm like, super excited to see some cool interpretations of crypto animals, the um, uh, what bear whale and those really strange ones would be really fun to see you um, interpret. Cool, um, DeFi Dave, how's your mic doing? Is this better? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good, sorry about that. Yeah, hey everyone, uh, thanks for having me up here. Um, yeah, so it's with uh, G Uni. I was talking to Willie at um, MCon in Denver, um, and I know you guys were going through. You know, you guys have your liquidity mining program now, and you're deciding, you know, what to do afterwards. And um, I wanted to provide a possible solution. I wanted to make clear, like, my post wasn't like, "Yes, we're definitely going to do this program." It was more just like, "Hey, this is a possible option." Is if you guys do decide to do. A liquidity mining program on Uniswap that GUni is an option. And what GUni is, is it basically turns Uniswap v3 into v2 again from a user perspective. It basically, right? Because with Uniswap v3, it's basically NFT. And so it's like, a, it's really hard for people to interact with and put in liquidity mining contracts. Um, so what Uniswap, so what GUni does, it, it wraps the NFT 
into an ERC-20 token and auto compounds the fees. And that's it. It's very generalized. It's very simple. And the ShapeShift DAO, ShapeShift community um, can decide who to have as an, a manager and the manager can set a fixed range. It can collect a fee if it wants, you know, to have rebalancing strategies or experiment with them. They can do that. They can hook up a smart contract for that. They can actually um, burn the role altogether um, if they want it to be more trustless. So there's a lot of options and a lot of design space there for strategists to go in. Uh, on top of GUNI and, and to basically provision liquidity on for for the Fox token as you know effectively as possible. So I just wanted like the proposal was like more like if you guys decide to do liquidity mining um, for you know after the current period because right now it's just on Uniswap V2, then GUNI is an option and you guys can decide if you want to do emissions. You guys can decide you know how long the period is going to be and it doesn't just have to be for Liquidity mining, um, we actually, um, along with Rari, we have a Rari pool, um, op Rari Fuse pool open for lending. Um, and we could, if you guys do decide to do GUNI, you could add, we could add the Fox ETH token in there as well. Um, so there's like a few options you can do with GUNI. And uh, that, that was basically my proposal. Thanks, DeFi Dave. Um, I think one of the reasons that this is getting bumped back is because. Um, there's quite a few of either the engineers or um, Fox community members that aren't super familiar with either all of the technical requirements that would go into this, or maybe how this would live inside all of our other current liquidity mining sort of incentives that we've got going on. So um, it might best perhaps be good to set up like a, a deeper call with some shapeshift engineers as well, or maybe we can find a way to get um, your ideas with the the big brains over here at ShapeShift so we can find out the best way to continue to move this forward. Yes, uh, I'm down for that. And I'm open to answer any questions and to clear anything up to see how we can work together. Yeah, hey, um, Dave, thanks for putting this together and for coming up and explaining some of the basics. For me, it's not just about like uh, the engineering integration, but like I actually still don't quite understand it all and which is totally fine it's a new concept from like the tokenomics perspective right and exactly what it does i'm not sure that this call is the place to do it so tyler's suggesting just setting up a community call and anyone who wants to learn more about it can just join and, and dive in there i i think i'm interested i'm interested a lot it's, it sounds interesting to me so yeah that's that's kind of where i am with it and from a then my own take, like from a governance perspective, I don't think it the uh, something going to vote like in boardroom just so that it can be a possibility. I don't see that really needing to go all the way to vote. Right. I think it's once we all talk about it some more, if it looks like, hey, this is something we're interested in and we actually put something that is yes, let's do that or not, that would go to a vote. But for something to go to a vote that's just a, hey, let's keep this option open when that time comes, I don't think that makes sense to go to, to a vote. Okay, I understand. That's fine. And I'm definitely down to set up, you know, a deeper call and, you know, get even our engineers on, on the call as well to explain GUNI further from a technical perspective. That sounds awesome. Yeah, no, it is really cool. Um, and I, like, we are quite proud of it and, you know, how much it has grown. Actually, um, what, two weeks ago, MakerDAO uh, integrated it as native collateral on their platform, uh, the DAI USDC pair. And so now if you want to like, go on Maker, you can use GUNI you know, DAI USDC collateral. So it's gotten some big uh, cosigns as well. Yeah, interesting. Like, I, I frankly, like, when you started talking about you mentioned it that something here is an NFT, and I don't even understand exactly. <laughs> yeah, so basically, how Uniswap V3 works, and V2, every basically, when you provide liquidity, let's say to Fox ETH, you get a receipt, and I call it a receipt in ERC20 token that represents that position. And that ERC20 token is fungible, it can be put in farming contracts, it could be used for staking, it could possibly be used for you know, in lending protocols, but the way that Uniswap v3 is built, they made it very general and bare bones. And for some reason, they decided to have each individual position in NFT as an NFT, the representation, basically, your receipt is an NFT. Um, and it doesn't auto compound the fees, and it's not as fungible. 
um, by de definition because it's an NFT. So like I said, that's why I just say uh, it's Uniswap V2 uh, on V3 again, but from a user experience, it actually, you know, it can aggregate a lot of users, you know, liquidity into one specific position. Uh, does that make sense? No, I got the no. fact that you're saying it's an NF, meaning it's not what you get back when you provide liquidity on V3 is mm -hmm. not fun, not interchangeable with what anybody else gets. Yes. Uh, but I'm still, I, and I don't know. Uh, so let's save this for the deeper call because I don't want Yeah, wanna, yeah, I understand. How's this going on? But I, I personally am super interested to, to learn more about because, frankly, by learning about your your proposal here i'm just going to learn more about how all these amm markets work which i think are so fascinating so i'm i'm totally game for doing a deeper yeah. dive yeah and gun is just one of gelato's automation products like other things we offer are you know limit orders for dexes we offer simple you know we call it our poke me that can automate arbitrary tasks so if you guys have anything simple and that's all we can, we can discuss all that uh on like a future you know more technical deep dive call cool Awesome. Thanks, man. Oh, thanks, DeFi Dave. I'm sure Willie's slipping in your DMs right now to get that <laughs> set up. Um, Perfect. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, I know that Diggy's out right now. Willie, did you want to talk about any updates that are going on with Pendo? And then I don't know if Kyle Stargarden's in here, but he brought some really great ideas to the uh, liquidity mining um, forum post that had kind of gotten stagnant for a while. Um, so I thought that that was worth bringing up and talking about on this call. Yeah, let's actually do the the Honeysop one too, because uh, while it may seem like it's gotten stagnant, there's there has been lots of discussions going on behind the scenes. The initial discussions, you know, we had a call with OneHive and uh, the Honeyswap team. We talked about liquidity mining for Fox on Honeyswap. Honeyswap is the DEX on XDAI. And as a reminder, we're interested in Community is interested in having more liquidity for Fox on XDAI because that is where Colony lives. So contributors that are working for Workstreams and getting paid are getting paid on XDAI. Right now, it's it's mostly in Fox tokens. And uh, in order to do anything with your Fox, you have to, right now, uh, bridge it to another chain. Or there's a little bit of liquidity on Honeyswap right now for Fox, uh, about $160,000, which was generously provided by Eric. Um, but we'd like to get a little bit more liquidity there. So the latest proposal um, that is uh, the latest yeah, draft proposal, I'll post a link to this forum post in OneHive's community right now. Um, and I will also post a link to our, to our forum post where there, I just added a new poll. So basically, um, we can kind of gauge everyone's sentiment on the latest idea. Um, it's getting a lot of support right now in OneHive's community. And so, and I just opened it up for uh, a poll in our forum. So please go check it out and vote. The general idea is instead of liquidity mining, it's an alternative. And it's a similar similar to Olympus Pro Bonds in the sense that the DAO would actually own the liquidity, but it's different. Um, it's, it's a different means to achieve that. So the idea is actually pretty simple. Basically, the latest proposal is that we would do a swap of Fox tokens with uh, the OneHive DAO for Honey tokens. Honey is OneHive's governance token. Um, we could do this, let's say $100,000 of each. So we would send $100,000 of Fox to OneHive DAO. They would send $100,000 of Honey to the Shapeshift DAO. And then both DAOs would deposit $200,000 worth of Fox and Honey liquidity onto HoneySwap. And what this would result in is an additional $400,000 in this liquidity pool for both Fox and Honey. It would, it would grow liquidity on HoneySwap for both of these assets in a way that doesn't require um, renting liquidity. So like uh, allocating a bunch of Fox that would just be used to incentivize individuals to come provide liquidity. And at the end of it, you know, we'd be in the same situation where um, we'd have to either continue um, incentivizing liquidity or we would have to hope that by that time, the, the fees, the trade fees are enough to incentivize liquidity providers on their own. Um, so this is pretty cool because the DAO will actually own this liquidity. It also enables us to diversify our treasury. It will be an asset. These liquidity pool tokens will be an asset on the DAO's treasury sheet. And furthermore, there'll be a revenue generating asset because trade fees, um, from the liquidity pool will go to the DAO. So I think I thought this was a super cool idea um, that Kyle Stargarden and Monstrosity um, kind of pioneered. Also shout out to LPX, uh, our community member for working with them through this. Um, another fun fact is that Honey and Fox have actually been like really correlated in value, which is really interesting. Um, so 
this uh, is getting support in the OneHive community. I just put it up for vote in our community. Um, yeah, if you have, does anyone have any questions? Or uh, hopefully that's enough information for us to all go. I would love to see everyone, um, you know, go share their vote in the forum, so we can see if the community is in support of this or not. Yeah, I think kind of similarly to the GUNI one, this one sounds like it might be worthy of another deeper community call just to have all of the community members who might need a little bit of a deeper dive to fully understand all of the circumstances here. So, um, eh, have we done I don't a, know. This uh, one, this, we have done one with them already. We, we certainly could, but I don't, yeah, I don't think it would actually be enough for a whole call because it's really simple. At the end of the day, we trade 100K Fox for 100K of honey. And then both DAOs deposit two hundred thousand dollars worth of liquidity to the pool, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, and it, well, that's, it, it, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and if we like it, we can you know it can be an experiment. If we if it goes well, we can always follow up with another proposal to do it to do more of this. And we could also, if it goes well, this is something that we could we could potentially experiment with other DAOs and with other projects on other uh, uh, networks, or other chains that we're trying to establish more Fox liquidity with. Um, sweet. And then I don't know if there's any updates on the Pendo one, um, or if it's still kind of at the same place it was last governance call, but, um, I know that you talked to Diggy right before, uh, she headed out for the day. So do we have any updates there? Yes. Um, Diggy and I have been talking with the Pendo team. Uh, the reason this has not gone up for proposal yet is we are still figuring out with the Pendo team, what the contract, if any, will look like for this. So uh, they got their whole, they got the CFO and the company on board to accept crypto payments, which is awesome. Um, shout out to the Pendo team for, you know, doing a ton of coordination on their end to, to even make that a possibility. Now, uh, the question is, you know, who would actually sign this contract? Typically when you do, when you sign up for software as a service or as a contract, um, there's things in there like, you know, uh, we agreed to not steal their code basically and uh, things like that. Uh, and yeah, the DAO shape's just going away. The DAO can't really sign contracts right now. And even if it could, it's like, how would those contracts really be enforced? So we've had a couple calls with them to try and figure out uh, the best path forward. And again, they're being super supportive and flexible. Uh, they really want to not only enable this for us, but you know, figure out a scalable model that can work for a lot of other DAOs as well. And yeah, we're looking at, uh, they're already, they've already made a lot of progress and things like uh, that example of like not stealing code. Um, instead of that liability being on the DAO, it will instead be like on any individual who logs into Pendo. They have to like, they're actually using Pendo for this, which is pretty cool. A little Pendo modal will pop up and it'll uh, have some terms and conditions basically that the user has to agree to to be able to use it. That was one creative solution that came up. We're just working through other questions like that and working with their team to come up with other creative solutions. But at this point, it is looking pretty optimistic that we will be able to figure out uh, a way to work with Pendo in a way that does not require like any contract for the DAO or any any weird stuff. Basically, it would be like any liability or any agreement would be on the individual level. We would set it up where there's really not a lot of li there's not like financial liability on the individual level, other than if they were to like do something like steal Pendo's code and stuff, then of course they would they would be liable for that. But uh, basically setting up in a way where it's not like a ton of liability that an individual is taking on where they would be out of control over the over the uh, the violation, if that makes sense. So, Sounds uh, like we kind of need a Vincent adult man for the DAO to sign all these papers. <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants to make a proposal or has other ideas for that, we're certainly open to it. But um, yeah, just figuring it out. And I'm really appreciative that Pendo has been super flexible. I think I'm looking to see when we have our next call scheduled with them. And I don't see it immediately. So I think possibly next week we'll have an update on this. Um, but right now the ball's in Pendo's court. We had a chat with them. and. They're just talking with their executives to see uh, and their lawyers and stuff to see um, if they can come up with a creative solution. So thanks everyone well, for the patience. Hope to have an yeah. update next week. And Fox props to you and Diggy for really pushing to encourage their CFO to accept crypto. That's such a cool adoption for for the whole space, you know. So that's that's super exciting to see. Um, all right, now we're going to hop onto this last page here, and this is old proposals. So these are a whole bunch of leftover forum posts that maybe have um, spent a week or two without any sort of updates, maybe a little bit longer. Um, there's some really good ideas in a lot of these. Um, some of them might need a little bit more work or love from the community to get across the finish line. Maybe the proposer who put them up um, has just gotten distracted with a whole bunch of other work that's going on. 
But if you see your name on one of these here, feel free to raise your hand and we can bring you up to talk more about it. Um, and feel free also to post questions in the stage chat. If you've got any questions about these proposals, we'd like to maybe get them uh, rolling again. Hey, it's me again. <laughs> so the, the finalizing range token specifications, like we could totally delete that. Like how do we expire them? Because that's really transformed into the success token proposal discussion. Yeah, that's a good question. I think Willie's um, got more admin controls on that, um, but we might need, be able to just delete the one and roll it into the other or move it. Is it in, are you saying it's in ideation right now? No, it's just a, it's just a forum post and it's, we're not, the idea is to, we're investigating the success token and I've been talking to Dutch, so that's moving forward. It's going slowly, but there, there is action on that success token proposal. There's nothing really to report at this point, but that finalizing Fox range token specifications is, I mean, it's just, it's dead. We sh we should not discuss it any further. Cool. We can just, you can just kill that, Tyler. There's no, yeah. it's not like an ideation or anything right now. Well, we'll just pull it from the slide going forward. Thanks, yeah. Josh, for that update. Great. Thanks. Of course. Um, I know that there's a lot of excitement around doing things with the keep key, either for a new client or for someone to manage the keep key. And I know Mr. Nerd Hair has expressed a keen hope that someone would pick it up because he's got his hands full with everything that he's already signed on to for the DAO. So that's one thing I see on two of these here that I'm going to keep championing and seeing if there's someone out there in the crowd that's interested in helping out with the keep key. If you are, jump into those forum chats or um, start talking about it now. And, rem and remember, we've got a uh, potential partnership on the hook with uh, uh, the uh, crap. I can want to say Polygon. It's not Polkadot people. Yeah, the, is it parody as well, or is, is yeah, that I mean, parody? Yeah, there's it's complicated. There's parody, substrate, Polkadot, all sort of the same thing, sort of. <laughs> all sort of. Um, thanks, Mr. Nerd here. Um, yeah, we're uh, definitely looking for um, a new solve or home or transition for keep key and potentially even revitalizing an old keep key client so people can use um the keep key outside of the shapeshift platform or in something that used to be like the old version of the keep key client we had so please reach out to myself mr nerd here jump in that keep key um channel if you're interested in any of those things and we'll connect you to the right people um doesn't look like we have anyone from the Herp protocol here. I know that that had some traction earlier and has kind of also kind of started floating in the water. So maybe myself or Willie can reach out to the Perp team and see if we can get someone to stir up some interest again. Yeah, I think we should definitely uh, reach out to them and see if they want to come join. I will just reiterate that they actually passed a proposal on their side already. So there is technically an active hundred thousand dollar Perp bounty out there to integrate Perp into Shapeshift. So. It'd be great to get them to come talk about that more with the community, but that bounty um, is already passed and exists. Right, yeah, with that incentive behind there, I definitely think we can do our due diligence over here and see if we can get the conversation going again. Um, all right, uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, this is the space to discuss ideas for proposals. If anyone has a new idea that they'd like to throw out at the governance call, this is the first time in a long time we've actually had a couple of minutes to open up this part of the call. So um, if you've got something you'd like to pitch in front of the audience and you're not a prank caller from someone at Walmart, we'd love to have you up here and talk about it. If not, we'll keep moving. I got a quick one. Um, well, anyone, else, anyone else raises their hand? Um, I had a call with uh, the president of this blockchain club at Northeastern University. Um, Matt Fox connected us to them. Uh, he It's his alma mater, and he uh, got to run to them at Mainnet NYC recently. Uh, anyways, there's about 50 to 60 super active um, students who are part of this club, and they're very interested in getting involved however they can, basically. So stay tuned for that. Um, no immediate proposals coming up right now, but I just thought that was super exciting. Um, 
I told them to jump in the Discord and the forum. Um, it's a mix of like product people, tokenomics people, engineers, um, and they're all just super, super. Uh, they're big fans of Shapeshift, and they're very keen to get involved with the DAO. Uh, and that gave them a great kind of overview. Um, so they're they're pretty familiar. And uh, yeah, we'd love to kind of set up some calls with their community soon. Um, and then also, I think something that would be really cool is if we could just send them a box of keep keys, like 50 or 60 keep keys for these active club members, I think would uh, really go a long way and would definitely result in some pretty active contributors, I think. So um, that sounds like when I used to go to colleges and hand out keep keys way back in the day. Oh, I remember doing that with you. That was so much fun. Um, but I think, yeah, and I think this will be even better because before it was like a blockchain class, but these are all kids who are like pretty active and in, in the club. Um, and even interested in getting involved with the with the DAO, so it worked pretty well back in the day. But I think this one this one would really I think give us a good ROI. It sounds like something that might be scalable beyond um, that one university as well. So interested to see how that call goes and how we might be able to tap into um, some educated and excited um, students that will be the next builders in crypto. Just remember doing those events with you, and we'd give people like ten dollars in Doge two and a half oh. years ago that could be a lot of doge now <laughs> yeah i did the calculations um back yeah. in the day and posted it in slack that anyone who held on to the doge that they got for answering a question from a, a shapeshift presentation um went from five dollars to over a thousand dollars so um super <laughs> hope those kids held on to it i hope they kept um, their private keys <laughs> <laughs> um all right Cool. Um, let's uh, move on to that next slide, Shifty. Um, oh, this is a space to discuss the governance process. This is a great time if you want to type in there or hop on stage about how we're doing. Do you think we're doing a good job? Do you think there's something that we could do slightly better here? I know people are frustrated with boardroom, and I wish I'm frustrated myself, and I wish that we could get all of that stack solved soon. Um, but if there's anything else people have about this process they'd like to chat about or talk about, now's the time to do it. I'm back. I also I hate long pauses, so uh, if I hear a long pause, you you will often find me trying to fill it. <laughs> but um, uh, actually, I'm glad you brought it up, Tyler, because this is something that um. I was actually just chatting about with John earlier. And um, yeah, I'm curious. I went to, I think, I'm not sure exactly what this will look like, but I went to um, put together a little doc, maybe a blog post just around, um, what's the best word for this? Like confrontation or um, anytime there's like friction between individuals in, in the DAO. Um, it's something that's natural. It's something that a lot of DAOs have struggled with. And I think we've done a really great job so far just communicating and uh, avoiding like drama, with, for lack of a better word, basically. But I also want to just give the community some like best practices, guidelines, and stuff like that that might be useful. Um, and these are things that, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of learning. John taught me one that, you know, I'll never forget, which is always, and it's so valuable. And it's just, um, you know, trusting those that are, that are on your team that they have the best intentions. Um, even if sometimes their actions make you think that they don't have the best intentions, just assume that they do have the best intentions. Um, that's been a really good rule of thumb for me. Also, something else that, that I've learned over the years is to, uh, anytime there is conflict, that ideally, as a first step, an individual can communicate directly with whoever there might be some conflict with. So, um, and, you know, this is all stuff that we can figure out. These are processes, conflict resolution and stuff. These are things that all DAOs struggle with and I think we can always get better at. But it's something that we haven't had to deal with too much yet, so we don't really have like clear processes in place. But yeah, I think you know, I think it would be good just to put together like a Notion doc, maybe even a blog post. This could be a blog post that would be good for other DAOs, but um, just like some guidelines and things like if you have conflict with someone, try to communicate with them first before going to others. If that doesn't go well, then maybe bring it to like the workstream level. If it's on, if it's a work, if you're part of a workstream together with this person. Um, have a chat with the workstream, and if that if it still can't get resolved in that level, then it's then it can be escalated. Um, and just things like that. Those are just some of the things that I've learned. I'm, I'm sure other people in the community have really cool ideas for how we can just like minimize conflict. And if there is conflict, address it soon. And, and uh, you know, trust that anytime someone disagrees with you, it's not necessarily personal, but like we want to encourage like good, healthy debate, right? Like if we're all just saying yes to each other, it's not going to be good. So just some things I've been thinking about and figured I might as well come up here and talk about it because we had the time. Oh, totally. Thank you. That's a uh, very kind of you, Willie. I'm excited to 
give those resources to everyone. And and if you um I'm totally would love to collaborate with you on this aspect, Willie. And I think we could get something down in writing and I have have some ideas too. So keep keep me in the loop there. Let's do it. In fact, Josh, I learned a lot of that stuff from you. Josh was always a, a great mentor for me at Shapeshift and is super good at uh, at communication and coordination and, and all that type of stuff. So I would love to work with you on that, Josh. Awesome. Yeah, I, I love that. Thanks, Willie, for leading up on that. And Josh, for any uh, help and collaboration, we can were both uh, great, great people to kind of push that forward. I think our community has been super collaborative so far, and it's been really awesome to see. But I think to Willie's point, it's just good to remember that as we get more and more people working together, various small teams and larger teams forming, it's inevitable that there will be various conflict and misunderstanding among people that just happens if you get enough people in a group. And following some of these rules, uh, or not rules, but suggestions of uh, you know, assuming best intention, giving benefit of the doubt. And when you have a problem, learning to confront it and discuss, discuss with whoever you're having a problem with can lead to really great results. So I think those are great skills for the DAO uh, to have some, you know, documentation on and also just great life skills in general. So thanks for pushing that forward, both yeah. Yeah, thanks everyone on that conversation. Uh, hey, Shifty, will you go a couple slides forward to get to that PO app there so we can put that up before the end of the call? Awesome, thank you. All right, guys, if you didn't grab your PO app, now's the last time to do so. Um, we'll leave this slide up until the call ends, but please grab your PO app before the farmers steal all of them. Um, I see someone's asking for the link. Unfortunately, PO app has disabled all URLs for PO apps going forward to stop or put a prevention on some of the farmers. So you actually need to use just the QR scanner um, to do to get that. Um, I believe also, I'm not exactly sure I haven't tested myself. You might actually now also need the POAP app to be able to scan these. I know they're working really hard over there to make um, the experience a little more um, streamlined, successful, and not prone to farming. So um, yeah, there's lots of details going on inside the stage chat right now about how to how to get those PO apps. Yes, you do have to have the app and whatever, but it is a nice experience. Exactly what I wanted to say. It's really smooth. Yeah, the gallery view on that's it's real like cool. Three seconds just to, to mint it. You know, no more captures, no more waiting, just bang. It's so cool. Thank you, Mr. Nerd Hair and DeFi Cafe for the um, votes of confidence in the app. All right. Um, well, with that, guys, I think we're going to call that a wrap on our governance call number 10. Um, thank you so much for everyone attending, for everyone who presented, and everyone who has great questions. That PO app is there. We'll have recordings of everything posted in the recording channel. Um, and if I can get some assistance getting a lo-fi girl up on the stage, we'll have some nice tunes playing the rest of the day until the stage closes. So thank you all, and make it a good GM, everyone. <laughs>